Alrighty guys, that's the tailings pile. We're going into the town of Malartic, which is just outside Valdor. That big pile you see there that looks like a mountain, that's not a mountain. That's a tailings pile. That's one of the largest open pit gold mines in North America. This whole region, like there's like, I'm not kidding, there's like 30 or 40 mines here and they're all like highly sustainable. This is cutting edge technology for the world. Like some of the technologies they're using for um, extraction technology and environmental, like environmentally friendly mining practices, because you have to realize this area is gonna be doing this for the next two, 300 years. So they have to have good technology and good like environmental practices. And it was a really cool thing up in the, th the museum there up near Rua Naranda. They look forward to when there's storms here because the trees get overturned and bring up gold seams. And they found, they basically, prospectors have been walking the bush after a storm and found like a gold seam just lying, like just after the tree blew over. And they're still finding them guys, like the Malartic mine and all these other ones, like some of these discoveries are like recent enough. And the other thing with this region is if you do find an ore body here, it's most likely gonna be a very big one, right? Because everything here, this is one of the most densely mineral laden areas in the entire world. Maybe South America, like Bolivia, Chile, parts of Africa as well, but there's very few places on the planet you're gonna find mineralization this heavily. Ville de Malartic, bienvenue, welcome. It's kind of mind blowing from a mining perspective because like I said, we don't have any ore bodies of this size in BC, not even close. Like Copper Mountain in Princeton is a pretty big, uh, pretty big ore body, but has nothing, nothing. You can't even compare it with this kind of stuff. And the Abitibi Gold Belt, it's called. Kirkland Lake is also in Ontario, also benefits from the same geology as this region does. Province. It is the oldest and largest of the geological provinces. It covers one third of Quebec, an area of 600,000 square kilometers, and forms the central part of the Canadian Shield. The province is composed of volcanic and sedimentary rocks, but mainly metamorphic rocks, such as granite and genus. The combination of rocks makes it one of the most important sources of minerals in Quebec and Canada. Recently, important discoveries of diamonds indicates kimberlites have been one of the main attractions. Note that it is the sub-province of the Abitibi is the largest of the Archean volcano sedimentary belts in the world. It is known for its deposits of copper, zinc, and gold. The sub-province of Abitibi is the largest of the Archean era volcanic sedimentary belts 2.5 to 4 billion years ago. Grenville province, 1.25 to 9.5 million years ago. It melded to the Superior province. From your large chain of mountains are known as the Laurentians. During this upheaval, the rocks were under severe pressure. These rocks, called metamorphic, are mainly composed of anorthrosites, quartzites, granites, and gabbros. The Grenville province is known for its iron ore, ilmenite, base metals, and the potential of industrial minerals. Mining sites in this area are among Quebec's most productive. So we're in the Superior province now. We were coming through the Grenville province earlier this morning. St. Lawrence platform between the Canadian Shield and the Appalachians is a province divided into two sectors, the lowlands of the St. Lawrence and of Anticosti Island. Both rest on rocks of the Grenville province. The St. Lawrence platform main resource is limestone. Two carbon natite intrusions contain nubium deposits. For this very rare metal, Quebec ranks second as a producer. Small in area, the province extends into central plains of North America. It extends from Montreal to the Chevalu region, occupying a few fragments of Quebec's North Shore. Grenville province, here we are. Valdor, Malartic, Renaranda. This is the Laurentian Mountains, and then that's the Laurentian Lowlands. That's the Appalachians here, the Appalachian Mountains. Covering an area of approximately 150,000 square kilometers in northern Quebec, Churchill is one of seven geological provinces that divide the Canadian Shield. The presence of copper, lead, zinc, uranium, nickel, cobalt, and tungsten are found in the northwestern part of the province. Southeast Churchill province is comprised of New Quebec and Torngat or origins and their hinterlands. The Torngat origin, located east of the Ray province, rocks which are intruded by kimberlite, contains diamond potential. That's up top, guys, up in the north. So here. Churchill province, that's what they're right here. Diamonds potentially up there. This is Labrador. So the Churchill province, 2.1 to 1.75 billion years. Appalachian origin, 650 to 350 million years. That looks like asbestos. 
Nubium. Number four, that's Nubium. Graphite. Iron. Copper. Gold. Sphalerite. Pyrite and quartz. So these are all mineral samples. That's the Malartic mine. In 2014, a Cisco Mining Corporation quarter to Montreal was considered the most important mining company in Quebec. Indeed, the Canadian Malartic mine, where one billion had been invested, is the largest open pit gold mine in Canada. The young company was no longer a junior size operator, having been in operation for the past three years, but not yet a giant. As the price of gold dropped significantly in 2023, the company became an enviable opposition for the major players in the gold industry. The Malartic extension project necessitates the relocation of part of Highway 117 to extend the Malartic, the Canadian Malartic open pit. The project will make it possible to extend the mine's operations until 2017, adding six years to the project. To exploit these sites, it is necessary to move Highway 117. The population of Malartic is more favorable to the modification of the highway. So, the world's oldest rock discovered during the summer of 2002 in northwestern Quebec. This rock fragment was extracted from a geological sequence referred to as Corpus Cove. The results of extensive analysis date the specimen at approximately 3.8 billion years. Such a discovery allows researchers to extend their knowledge of the processes involved in the formation of Earth's crust and possibly the introduction of life on the planet. Power tools, cerium for the catalytic converter, lanthanum, neodymium, nubium, Lithium, intrusions, comatite. Oh, comatite. You can't get comatite anymore. Well, it doesn't, the Earth's core doesn't burn hot enough to have to produce comatite lava. Libdenum bismuth. Okay, so this is all the periods. So the Grenville province and the Superior province. You can see all the mines. Valdor is here, Malartic is here. Ruan Naranda is here, Cadillac, so there's the mines all over here guys. This whole corridor, we're chasing the Cadillac Fault. Zinc, lithium, nickel, vanadium, this is lots of rock samples basically. Quartz, diabase, prototype. Okay, so this is the Earth expert. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, we've seen that, right? Crust, inner mantle, um, and the core. The mantle's magma broke through the crust and formed igneous rock as it cooled. The intrusive igneous rock stayed in the crust, whereas volcanoes spitted out extrusive igneous rocks, which ultimately ended up at the surface of the continents before erosion carried them away into the ocean, where they turned into sedimentary rocks. The universe has existed for 15 billion years, the Earth for 4.5 billion. Rocks and minerals bear marks of time, which are commensurate with their age. Very old region of the planet, guys. Very, very old region. Granite, gabbro, rhyolite. So this is the mining area. Calcopyrite, quartz, zinc, iron, lithium, beryllium, that's the open pit mining. So they got a shovel bucket, a loader, and dump truck, and then drilling and blasting. That's lithium right there. Zinc. This, the flux, the internal flux of the Earth's core is not as hot. Amethyst, that's a cool looking geode there. Tons of cool rocks, man. So you can see these are all rocks from the Superior Province. Grenville Province rocks and then St. Lawrence. That's straight up asbestos, man. Yes, they had to move the road. Oh yeah, deviation. The road was here, and then I gotta put it there. Alrighty guys, so we finished up the Mineral Museum. That was really cool. Learned a lot about the um, Grenville Province, the Superior Province, the Appalachian Mountains, the St. Lawrence Lowlands, the Churchill Province the various mineralizations and the time periods and four billion years, man, that's a long time. That's a long time. Uh, very, very old rock here. So we're gonna go up to the viewing platform now for the Malartic mine. This is the stairs here to get up. We're in the town of Malartic, which is about 25, 30 minutes heading uh, west out of Valdor there. So in between 
Valdor and uh, Rui on Aranda. So we're heading up now, and we're now in the Superior Province. We were driving through the Grenville Province this morning. Stairs, man. Whew. But uh, here we go. Here's the mine. So there we go, guys. This is the Malartic mine. This is the mine that they wanted to use to move the highway, the ore body underneath the highway there. And they wanted to relocate the highway so they could mine the ore. You can see it's an active work site. There's trucks there, down there, hard at work there. They're cooling everything down with hoses, probably for uh, dust. Got to keep away that silicosis. But it goes way down, man. You can see the benches. It's absolutely massive. And this is this town's big thing, guys. There's a lot of money in here. This is a gold mine. It's not copper or silver or zinc. It's gold, right? So you can imagine this much gold and they're all, they're working the rock. It's all rock. It's all sh hard shield, superior province rock. So they're drilling it down. They're drilling holes, blast holes, blast pattern, right? Whatever it's been designated. Packing it full of explosives and charges. Then they come in after with shovel buckets and loaders, load up the rock trucks that you see driving here, and then they transport it to the site processing facility for crushing and, you know, putting it on trucks or loading it out or doing whatever they're doing to it. And you can see the tailings piles. They've got the benches with the tailings piles and stuff all neatly along it. And then they're just going down. Effective March 31st. 2023, Agnico Eagle Mines Limited became the sole owner of the Canadian Malartic Mine and the Odyssey Mine that it manages and operates. Agnico Eagle is a senior Canadian gold mining company producing precious metals from operations in Canada, Australia, Finland, and Mexico. It is recognized globally for its leading environmental, social, and governance practices. Before you lies the Canadian Malartic Pit, which began commercial production in June 2011. After more than 10 years, mining operations in the Canadian Malartic Pit officially ended on May 5th, 2023. The Canadian Malartic Pit, which is 1.8 kilometers long and one kilometer wide and 360 meters deep, will now be used for waste rock and tailings disposal. The smaller Barnet Pit is located 900 meters to your left. In operation since 2018, Mining in the Barnet Pit is expected to continue until 2029. At the end of the Canadian Ballardic Mine's life, the Barnet Pit is expected to be 1.7 kilometers long, 750 meters wide, and 380 meters deep. The Canadian Malartic Mine operates 24-7. It's poured its 7 millionth ounce of gold in June 2023. Waste rock pile or pile of rocks behind the Canadian Malartic Mine's pit will reach a height of 100 meters. When mining ceases, we plan to, among other things, revegetate the entire tailings pond and waste rock pile, as well as other industrial surfaces. At the end of the underground mine operations, allow the pits to flood with natural groundwater and precipitation, thus covering the mine tailings and waste rock generated by the Barnet Open Pit and the Odyssey Underground Mine Operations and stored in the Canadian Malartic Pit. Secure the site, restore its natural appearance, and conduct all required environmental monitoring. To your left is the Odyssey Mine 93 meter high head frame. Located approximately 3 km east of the entrance to the town of Malartic, the Odyssey Mine will develop the continuity of the deposit in the Canadian Malartic and Barnard pits through the known underground mineralized zones. It will become one of Canada's largest underground gold mines. Mined via a ramp and a 180 meter deep shaft, the Odyssey Mine is expected to produce 550,000 ounces of gold annually. The mine's life is estimated to be through 2042. The first ounces of gold from the Odyssey Mine were poured in November 2022. Production using the ramp began in 2023, while the one using the shaft is slated to begin in 2027. You can see the tower over there, guys. So that's the Odyssey mine, the underground pit. There's a little tower, I'll zoom in there for you on the camera, but that's it. And then so they're using this as a tailings dump. They're gonna dump the tailings in here now. And that's Malartic, the town of Malartic. They do tours of this. They'll take you on a bus tour into the mine and show you the trucks and the diggers and Everything cool, processing facility. Definitely worth it if you're into that kind of a thing. Come you come all the way out here, you may as well do it, why not, eh? But you can see, quite busy. You can see the rock trucks there working. Everybody's working away, pretty busy. That's the Malartic Mine, guys. Another mine in the, uh, kind of the mine show here for the uh, Abitibi region in Quebec here. Quebec, very, very big in gold mining. Lots of industry here too. It's the economy's booming here, man. But that's, that's kind of how it goes with gold, right? The economy tends to, uh, Follow the gold, right? Um, started a lot of economies, right? A lot of guys 
that um, in the States, in Canada, a lot of cottages and businesses and uh, homes were all bought with money earned in the gold rushes, right? Various gold rushes. Uh, stock markets were created and all kinds of things, right? Rossland in BC there, New Toronto Stock Exchange, Timmins, Cobalt. We're gonna be going to Cobalt too, Timmins. We're gonna be doing all these places, guys. There's just not enough time in the day here. So that's the museum. Museum de Meteorologique. Oh, air compressor. Horizontal cylinder. Reducing the rock to powder. Oh, it's a grinder. Yeah, okay. Ore cart, compressor, grinder, mucker, that's a mucking machine. These are cool, this is for underground, this is like an underground loader. That's why it's got the low profile. But he can sit on there. Is that a carry ore to the surface, ore bucket? Melting pot. Is heated by coal or oil used to melt the gold to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, 1100 degrees Celsius. Rotated to pour the gold into bricks. Use diamond bits, drilling into rock. We've got another drill here. And then a memorial for all the miners. The old Malardic Museum there. So guys, that's gonna be it for Malardic here. I hope you enjoyed it. Museum Mineralogic, the Malardic viewpoint there, the observatory platform as they call it in uh, Quebec. And uh, just some equipment and stuff, it's cool guys. Definitely worth it, checking it out, learning the geology of the region and everything, it's pretty cool. Alrighty guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. That was really fun. Lots of cool stuff to see and do. Learn about all the volcanic provinces, Superior province, Grenville province, Churchill province, all the old history. So I hope you liked it. And uh, Sasquatch Prospector, out. Oh.